Tony Ferguson uh, taking, he, he was supposed to be fighting Michael Chiesa in the main event of this card. He uh, Chiesa fell out. Tony Ferguson took a late replacement opponent uh, in, in the form of uh, one of the Jackson Winklejohn MMA fighters who I'm not even that familiar with. You you knew him from when you were at Jackson's? He worked a lot with uh, Brandon Gibson. Yeah. We're going to see him do the workouts. Uh, Lando, he's a well, very well-rounded fighter, as you're seeing right now. He's striking, uh, very loose, and um, very fluid with his combinations. I know a lot of people probably watching, seeing his hands down. Uh, he probably ate one or two more jabs than he had to if he had his hands in a different position. But yeah. uh, you can see his unorthodoxness. I, I, in the beginning of that round, he was able to use a defensive spinning back knuckle, stepping back, and caught Ferguson coming in. And then on another uh, situation where you just see how complete of an MMA guy he is, he uh, caught a kick, looked like he was just going to kick out the leg of Ferguson and uh, go for an easy takedown. But instead, when uh, Ferguson tried to get out, he threw a head kick, which is uh, just, you, that's not a wrestling move. It just shows how down there at Jackson's, you know, the guys are really complete. They're well-rounded and uh, do a lot of great things. Lando Venata, he was signed short notice for this fight, uh, making his UFC debut and giving Tony Ferguson all he could handle in the first round. So we got a little bit of an impromptu uh, fight companion breaking out here. phenomenal first round. Well, uh, Straight punches of Ferguson are really starting to land on point. You know, I really thought if he started using his jab a lot more and the straight shots, and uh, he's starting to come back in this round. I feel that so far in the first minute or so of the second round, uh, Ferguson's doing a great job of really catching him at the end of the punches. But, you know, Ferguson has such an aggressive style. You can see him even use the overhand lead elbow. Yeah. Um, but he's the longer guy. That was yeah. a great little push off the cage. He really doesn't need to come forward as much as he is. He can kind of stay lateral and move around and uh, utilize his range. There may not be anybody I get more excited about watching just fight in and fight out every time I see him come up uh, on the roster than Tony Ferguson. I mean, the last three, four, maybe even five fights he's had. Yeah, they're super I get, excited. I get excited for him going in, and then they always deliver. They never disappoint. Always watching out. Oh, he's setting up his. Uh, he's got a well standing guillotine now. I always look for his darce choke. He's got those crazy long arms. Yeah, he just switched it off to a darce. Yep, yep. That's his uh, move. He's got it in Has pretty got good. It? Uh, yeah. He sure is. He going to finish another fight via darce? No, you know what? It looks like Lando's got his back down. He might get his armpit out a little bit. He's pushing he's off. To create a little space, pushing his yeah. hips out. Yeah, he needs to drive all the way to his left side and get his elbow uh, down. That's it. He's no. done. Wow. Tony Ferguson finishes another fight, spectacular fashion, via his signature Darce choke. But uh, Venata, in his, in his short notice debut, I, boy, obviously instantly showing he belongs in the UFC against a top contender like Ferguson. Yeah, it makes for exciting fights. A uh, lot of offense, uh, great head movement. Uh, the first round he made, Tony miss a lot. Uh, but then Ferguson started catching on point with more of the straighter shots. I think not being so aggressive and, you know, running himself down. I think that by throwing one or two and coming forward, he, the the shorter limbed uh, Lando was able to slip a shot or two, and then it really set him up for his overhand and some of his hook shots. But um, by uh, there was another example you see there on the uh, replay, his hands down, a little too comfortable with a guy of Ferguson's calibers caliber of a fighter and, and the length that he has striking yeah uh, even if just a little bit of having his hands up he might have deflected some of those shots and made ferguson not have to fire straight down the middle and fire on and there you see them with the standing guillotine and switch it off to uh his darce which due to his long arms and his skill set uh they both equal up pretty nicely you know a good combination for him and he's very effective at it and that is uh, that's awesome stuff from Tony Ferguson, you know. And you got to wonder how much longer it's going to be before uh, Ferguson has a lightweight title shot. He's one of those guys that that like Cerrone was before he got his title shot. Probably could have uh, made a claim to uh, to having a title shot a couple of fights before he actually got one. I know they're stacked toward the top of that uh, division, but especially with the new champ uh, Eddie Alvarez. That is, uh, that is really interesting stuff. John Lineker knocks out Michael Mayday McDonald, and that's an interesting one because 